Brighton Community Redevelopment Agency. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. We will have citizen comments for items not on the agenda. First on the list is Kim Wilmerow. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Kim Lamorell, and I am with Exodus Community Resources. First, I want to say the CRA is doing great things. I've seen you guys fund things from uh, community events, different um, organizations, even to um, a young man uh, doing transportation. He asked for like 100000 per car to do um, the freebie. So I know you guys consider a lot of things for the city. So I do want to... Um, come before you um, to talk about Exodus Community Resources. It is a community resource center to meet the needs of the community, providing a strong foundation that will empower the citizens to meet their educational, emotional, physical, and sp spiritual needs. We provide each individual with love, stability, and motivation and direction to give them a hope for the future and provide each individual with opportunities for success. We believe that creating a safe space in the neighborhood where at-risk youth and teens live will enable them to receive the necessary tools and skills that they need. So we are asking um, for funds. I'm asking for $150,000 to help with um, services for the youth. I did bring this to the city yesterday and I was um, able to talk with the mayor and the mayor was saying how the Boys and Girls Club does a lot because I said that we had a Boys and Girls Club, they tore it down and they didn't replace it with anything but a parking lot for the, um, for the baseball field. They didn't put anything to replace it. We also had a community center on 9th and they tore that down. They moved it across town. So there's nothing here. I'm a citizen, I've been in my home since 2006 and I've seen the deterioration of the youth. Some of those youth I used to see riding the bicycles too the Boys and Girls Club, now they're on the street selling drugs. And we have to provide resources. The city needs to provide, help us. There are a lot of organiza organizations that are doing a lot of things, but I call them fireworks. They come in and do a little bit and then they're gone and then what? We need some stability where we can continuously provide to these at-risk youth. The mayor did say the Boys and Girls Club are servicing. Uh, they went from 90 to 500, I believe he said for elementary school, but middle school and high school, what are they doing? What do we have for them? We don't have anything for them. So we need to provide something because they're the ones that are really at risk. School, they drop out. They're being recruited for gangs. They're recruited for drugs. They're recruited for a lot of other things. This is a um, group of youth that need services. Exodus Community Resources, we're here to educate, empower, um, we uh, encourage the youth. First of all, we got to encourage them, build them up, let them know who they are, empower them. We educate them. So that is what we do. We are, and I'm not a long ranger. I have different organizations that are working. We're working together to meet the needs of this community. So I would like to do a full presentation at a, another time. Um, we are, again, requesting $150,000 for the services in this community. We need your help. Our youth need the help. I know that we're meeting the needs of the elementary, but like I said, middle school and high schoolers, they're dropping out left and right. We're coming off the end of a pandemic. A lot of them missed so many services. They weren't even, some of them weren't even in school, you know? So City of Bradenton, CRA, please help us. Um, I would love to sit with you. I'll give you other information at a later date. Thank you for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Next is Keenan Wooden. All right, good morning. Keenan Wooten, 19, uh, 914 8th Street East. Uh, Ms. Morell, I would love to sit down with you and other council members just to talk about the history and what's going on in our, com our community. I can tell you where those middle and high schools, are, high schoolers are going. They're bust out. They're bust out of War 5, going into neighborhoods that's not foreign to them. 
but then we come back, nothing. I've been dealing with this too long. Uh, that community center, I, did, I attended that Boys and Girls Club. That was the biggest Boys and Girls Club around here. All right, but I wasn't in a position to make decisions then and it gets tore down and then we get a uh, elementary model. Great, well our middle school kids and high school kids, they're not doing anything. So there's something to put a bug in here because I know the history, dates, time, place, where, what, if you wanna get a history of it, we can sit down and talk about this with our council because there's still problems over there, okay? Uh, but back to what I really came <laughs> about here, uh, the, the Martin family, uh, torch bearers of War 5. Um, we have a ribbon cutting this Saturday. I sent the email to all of you. Kind of had to tweak my flyer a little bit. Kind of got the rules messed up there. But uh, charge it to my head, not my heart. Um, our, our, our family has been here uh, for a while now. Uh, Burdell and Ike Martin, they uh, matriculated here to the city of Bradenton, Ward 5, uh, for work. All right, they came here for work, picking fruit. Uh, between that union, they had 12 kids, hundreds of grands and great grands. I'm one of the grands of our family. Uh, we, uh, our main area was 10th Avenue, Washington Park, uh, where the old ditch was. Uh, and that's where we were, right down from that Lyles Bryant School. And we have, for colored students, we have a marker there. And that uh, looks like that's gonna be uh, on this African American trail that the, uh, the, the Chamber of Commerce and other organizations they are doing here. So uh, it's a lot of rich history there. Uh, we're having a ribbon cutting at 914 8th Street East this Saturday at 9 a.m. We created a duplex. That used to be a kind of drug area, but we specialize, we come in, we specialize in, in taking back over our neighborhood. And we've done it so much in that neighborhood that everybody knows us. I, I On the completion of that project, I had about a thousand emails, people trying to get housing. So we're not an uh, amateur family. We've been there for a while. Uh, we put in, we we put in a, a, a bid or a, 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 for for those two houses that you guys are uh, getting rid of. So our family is here. Uh, we're, we're not amateurs. So I invite all of you out to our ribbon cutting this Saturday. It'll be a small event, but it's a good way to come in the family, come in the neighborhood, meet our family, meet what we're about and uh, see what we have going on in our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next is Bill Sanders. Hi, Bill Sanders, 2502 Riverside Drive East. I'm here today because I'm very sad. We've lost the executive director I feel through intimidation and fear. And it was promised that she would lose her job after the election. And I shake your head all you want, ma'am. But this is one of the most egregious acts I think I've ever witnessed. Chris. I don't know if you're either going to be the interim or not. It appears so you should be. <clears throat> I assume you've, you're qualified and uh, certified with uh, CRA through the compliance of statutory regulations 163. We don't seem to follow it. Or we only follow it to what the needs we want. I know on this agenda, there's a couple items that says we're gonna hire some city service people to do cleanup and stuff downtown. That's not really a CRA function. That's a city function and it's prohibited by law to use CRA funds for city functions. We can't hire police officers and, and, and rotate that over. That's not what the intention of this program. I know we've done that, but I, I still feel very greatly that that was wrong to use <coughs> dedicated funds to remove slum and blight and help the community to employ officers and, and people to clean our streets that we'd have to, we should have to do anyway. So that is inappropriate use of the funds and I don't like how this has been done. And it's gonna continue, it seems, it's, it looks as if it's gonna get more of that versus less of that. 
and I'm hoping that there be more honesty and integrity to oversee this. Yes, I hope so. I haven't seen it. Like I said, I'm very disappointed. And I don't think this is over yet because I'm looking at all of you one at one, and especially you, Mrs. Bartomey. I was outside the door that day and heard your conversation. It's hard for you to just not spit back at me, I know. But I heard everything. And this is not over. Thank you. Well, the citizen comments are over unless anyone else has a card to turn in. Um, I will address, uh, we'll give board some opportunities to speak uh, regarding Ms. Kiriko Siren, um, our former executive director of the CRA. She announced her resignation uh, a couple weeks ago, and at that time I acted to move uh, Chris Mignon as acting interim director until such time as we as the board could meet. Um, thank you very much again for coming today. I know uh, Ms. Morell, you came yesterday and spoke eloquently again uh, on your topic, and thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Wooden, thank you very much for coming today and uh, speaking again. Thank you again for the invitation. Uh, what time is that again? Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, anyone else wants to speak? Please feel free. Yes, I would like to. Ms. Morell, as I said yesterday, you're, you're preaching to the choir, and those discussions have been had. Um, initially when I sat in the seat in this council and the mayor, as I said, well, this board, uh, are in total agreement with you. And there's possibilities in the air. And for Mr. Wooten, what your family is doing for the community is outstanding. And I am happy to see the progress um, and that's it. Thank you. Anyone else here to speak? Okay. Moving on the agenda, consent agenda. Um, I would like to pull items A through D simply because of some typos I found that I've addressed with uh, Ms. Kaiser and Mr. Mignon. Um, but I will entertain a motion to approve items E and F. I move, oh, move to approve consent agenda items E and F. I will second it. Motion is second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, passes 5 0. Um, regarding the item A through D, um, the meetings, uh, the minutes of the meetings, um, just small typos really is all I noticed. I don't know if anybody else did. Um, for mine, uh, for the item A, 12, 14, 22 minutes, page five, line two, read in part, Mr. James, comma, BR. And um, I spoke with Ms. Kaiser, it should have been Brandis instead of BR, should, the last name should have been B-R-A-N-D-Y-S. And she's made those corrections. Um, the minutes for 118, 23, page one, section two. Uh, the proper spelling of the last name Morell is M-U-R-R-E-L-L, -L, which has been corrected. For 218.23, page two, line two, read in part property this, but should have been read this property, and that's been corrected. And 223 minutes, page one, under the in attendance. Um, the last name Gonzalez of Gonzalez Moore was improperly spelled. That has been corrected. Thank you. You are welcome. <laughs> I hate it when I'm with a K instead of a C, uh, which happens a lot, especially yeah. some media outlets here in town. <laughs> um, and also Section 5A. Uh, 
the slash there there wasn't a slash it's just me being me uh between downtown and 14th street uh connected with the it's now has a slash inserted between the two to be consistent throughout uh i confirmed that the downtown slash tamami trail was not active yet and that was discussed at a later meeting so that will come in future minutes so um did anyone else have any minute changes okay I'll entertain a motion to approve those minutes as edited. Move to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All right. Have a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Passes 5 out. All right. Uh, next will be the all CRAs, the appointment of the CRA interim executive director. Uh, as I mentioned, Ms. Uh, Siren uh, scheduled a meeting with me and announced she wanted to resign. Or in her intent to resign, and um, I, we accepted that. Um, and at that time, um, I discussed with her uh, if she felt that Chris would be ready to step in as an interim role, and she wholeheartedly supported that. So um, at that time, we uh, I made him the acting um, interim director, and now we're here to officially appoint him as the interim director in front of the entire board so I'll entertain a motion to I don't know if there's anything official in the minutes anywhere uh, entertain a motion to appoint Chris Munyan as that's a proper pronunciation of your last name correct yes want to make sure we get that right uh, Chris Munyan as the interim director of the CRA Motion second. Any discussion? We can. I'll note that we've had meetings already, uh, Mr. Munyan and I, and I. I think he. I've expressed to him that I have confidence, given his um, his experience and his credentials. Um, I know that he will dedicate himself and his time to getting the team where they feel they need to be to move on so that we can get to the the meat of what we are here to do. I thank him for stepping up and for the service. I had a pleasure of uh, attending along with Ms. Gonzalez Moore, uh, with Mr. Mignon, uh, the CRA 101 training in Orlando a couple weeks ago, which was quite fun. We passed. I did pass. Yes, yeah, so did I. I wasn't going to so say it. <laughs> Uh, but yes, it was uh, it was a really entertaining class. It was uh, very informative, and I was glad to see you were there again. Uh, we had about twenty, I think it's about twenty eight different mm -hmm. uh, electeds and appointed uh, CRA officials from throughout the state. Um, that really it was a it was a great day, a good collaboration. I think we made some contacts to have some potential visits here and there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a surprisingly fun time. Traffic on the way home was not fun. No. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was fun. Yeah, yeah, traffic. But so, uh, so, uh, any further discussion? All right. I'll, I'll just note too on the heels of the um, training that um, we did engage quite a bit with others, and that it provided a wealth of information regarding uh, rules, law, mm -hmm. um, how to conduct ourselves as we make financial decisions and so I'm confident that we can make decisions with full integrity and knowledge of what we need to do. I don't know to make a statement. I think you guys have to vote first. Uh, we will make our vote at this time. Any any further discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor will go board by I'm sorry, board by board member? Yes. 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 All right, 5 you have something to say, sir? I do. Okay. So I just want to let you guys know that I appreciate the support from day one of being acting. And actually, actually, most of you, three of you, support from when I became CRA manager. So this is a, you know, um, I don't take this lightly. I appreciate uh, your support and your trust in us to help you know, guide on uh, the CRA um, into the future and have the CRA become very successful. So when we do sunset, we hand that off 
um, in a success for the county and the city going forward. Um, again, I thank you so much for your trust in me. Um, I'm ready to get to work. Um, I also wanted to let my team know, KAK and Gene G, we've been, you know, together for almost a year now, and um, they're amazing people and amazing workers, and have, you know, given me the confidence to step up in this role, and so I want to thank them individually um, for their support and the work they do, and um, thank you so much, and thank you. Thank you. I would, I would say you're not going to get to work, you're going to continue working. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> true. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Chairman, if I could just clarify, because I don't, I don't think the way that it came out where you said three of us, the other two were not sitting on this side of the dais when you right. joined the right. CRA. Right. So. <laughs> That's what I meant. <laughs> I got it. Okay. It took me a minute. Yeah. Okay, uh, next is the Braden CRA District, uh, addition of two Queen City maintenance technicians for the downtown action team. Are we getting? All right. Good morning, Chairman and Board. Uh, Lance Williams, the Finance Director for the City of Bradenton. Uh, Chris, let me be the first to congratulate you on your interim position. Um, I can assure you that in the sh couple of weeks since the transition, um, Chris and KK and I and my team have worked closely to get some things wrapped up that should have been taken care of previously. And um, they jumped on it real quick. And I just appreciate their accuracy and efficiency. Um, and willing to work with us. And um, as you approach our budget season, um, you know, we, we certainly will be there to help you, and, you know, reach out to you. So congratulations and look forward to working with you. Thank you. Um, so what brings us to here today is the uh, addition of two uh, downtown action team members. Um, I have with me James Moore, who's actually the, the manager of that group. Um, initially, when we started this initiative, um, the idea was to focus strictly on the downtown <coughs> core. Um, obviously, with the traffic, the restaurants, the bars, and, and um, you know, kind of the image that we're looking to get, we wanted to focus on making sure that we had a continuous ability to, to take care of graffiti, stickers, the power washing, cleaning, and so forth. Um, when we started this initiative, we started with three, uh, with the previous director, with the understanding that it may change. You know, this is something new, this is something different, and um, we've kind of come across that now. We've, been, we've set this group um, in action, and they've done a fine job. I was telling Mr. Moore the other day, I was watching his, his group actually take stickers off of signs, and uh, you know, that's not something that was done before. So I'm glad to see that what we initiated is actually working. James has done a great job in managing the group. Um, the more we've talked about it, though, however, we've also realized that we need to cover more time. Um, and so by doing that, what we'd like to do is expand their schedule into more of a weekend schedule as well, knowing that we have crowds for the restaurants and bars and so forth downtown on a Saturday. Um, so we'd like to implement a Saturday schedule for his crew. Um, obviously, in order to do that, we need more than the three people. Um, so we're, we're coming to you today to ask for two additional folks. Uh, we'll have a rotating schedule um, on that weekend. Um, and then plus this covers any kind of, you know, illnesses, uh, make sure that we have some repetitiveness in that, in that group. So if he has any, any um, employees that are off that we still have coverage, he's still able to maintain, uh, you know, the level of service that, that we've initiated to provide. So you want to add anything to that? I just want to introduce your, myself to you all, board members, uh, chair. Um, I'm James Mora. I'm a new Floridian. I moved from New Mexico out here a couple of years ago. My daughter was studying to be a doctor and, and just became a doctor. She's all I got. So I moved out here um, after 30 years of service with the, with the city. I came in as a clean city coordinator and I, I love your town. It's still small. I come from 
600,000 um, people in the city of Albuquerque. I was the deputy director for the solid waste department where I had thousands of employees. And I come down here and it's hmm. like going back into the Andy Griffin days. It's just <laughs> small and people still wave hmm. to you and still they know, they know your <laughs> name and bad. they talk to you and I, I just love it. And uh, if there's anything you need from me, please, please call. I'll go above and beyond for you board members. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Welcome. I hope we'll get to where you'll say, I love our town. <laughs> but um, when we originally passed this, it was with the understanding that we were going to be doing enhancement. And I, I definitely, you know, stickers and I'm seeing that and I'm all for this. But I want to see some, fr some flower or color and some maybe baskets or something like that. So um, I'm hoping that with the addition, I know that's maintenance, but... Um, I think it could go a long way. So I'm just putting my two cents worth in. It's, Welcome. It's coming. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you and I have worked together very closely with some of the issues that we've had throughout the city as far as um, a change in the policy. You know, it, it used to be in the friendly city that if anybody put anything at the curb, we would pick it up. And what that did in my mind was cause some bad actors out in the community that rather than paying to take it to the dump would come and dump stuff in Bradenton. We all know this happened. Mm -hmm. um, so I think now trying to get people to pay their fair share, particularly the landlords that were used to just dumping stuff out in front of, of their properties, having them call and arrange, it, and, and being charged for that because they're operating a business. So I want to thank you for what you've done and I look forward to what you're gonna do. Thank you. Uh, for comments will be Ms. Coachman and then Ms. Moore. Welcome, as everyone has said, so I'll just say ditto to that. Um, you have been here and made a difference. Um, my question though is, not of your integrity or your expertise, dollars and cents. Okay. Um, the expense, and I've kind of said this before to staff, that seems like the city and the CRA should work closer together with this, but, and as opposed to the Bradenton CRA trying to eat all of this. So can you speak on that, Lance? I mean, Mr. Williams. Yes, yeah, so, so we, um, we, don't, we uh, absolutely agree. Um, I know Mr. Moore had a meeting with uh, the city staff a couple of days ago, kind of defining, and I think uh, Mr. Money was there as well, um, kind of defining what some of the roles were going to be. Um, there was, I, I want to tread lightly, but I guess there was, a, there was a, kind of an attempt to expand it a little bit, and we, and, and we needed to make sure that that, that, wasn't, that was not going to happen. Um, that the focus was going to be on the downtown uh, CRA and to make sure that we covered, you know, the maintenance in the area, that area. Um, I know that in the past there's been talk about, you know, this is stuff that, that the city was doing before. Um, that's not the case. Um, did we run a sweet street sweeper through here? Of course we did. Um, but to the extent of, of what Mr. Moore's crew is doing, um, it's far above and beyond anything that the city staff was doing. And in order to represent what the city is looking to represent um, it needs to be continuous maintenance and the reason is people love coming downtown mm -hmm. they love coming to the restaurants they love coming to the bars um, but you've all <clears throat> excuse me you've all been here after a weekend and you see if we do nothing oh. what it looks like so um, we want to make sure that we stay on top of it um, mr moore's done a great job with the few staff members he's had um, there is an increase in cost it's still the same per technician um, so we're just going from the three to the five, um, but it's well within um, the you know, budgetary means for the CRA. I've had talks with Mr. Munyon, and I will continue to do that. Um, and there may be some reduction in, you know, we've, we've put a budget together, and obviously this being the first time this, is, uh, this kind of initiative has taken place, we had to start somewhere. Um, so does that mean that we'll, we'll spend every single dollar? Absolutely not. Um, but we wanted to make sure that, that Mr. Moore and his staff had the equipment and the supplies needed to maintain the level of service that, that we're promising with this group. 
Um, and I think some of, some of the things that you've seen, kind of to speaking of you know, some of the improvements, they've restained some of the trash cans. They've cleaned those up. They've restained some of the benches. And you walk down Main Street, and it looks, just with that simple task, it looks so much better. So they'll continue to do that. Um, so I think what we'll see is um, there's, you know, there is a, an increase in cost, obviously, when we add two additional employees. Um, but I think what you'll see is the return is going to be far greater than what the cost is. That answer your question? That answer. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my question was going to be similar to that, um, but not really a question as much as a comment. I think that we undertook the legal analysis the last time that we voted to have the three. Um, so I think today, our, my thought is what we're really doing is dealing with whether or not we want the increased expense. And my uh, thought on that is, to Mr. Williams' point, it's a work in progress. It's a program that we're just now developing. And so my thought is, let's see what happens. Let's see if Ms. Coker gets <laughs> flowers and color. <laughs> and if we determine that it's not working out, we can always revisit it. And and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the um, initial resolution asked to this was after a year, um, it would be revisited. Mm -hmm. So I, that, that's not going to change. You know, we'll continue to, to take a look at it and revisit it. Um, I think you'll be happy to see with some of the improvements that Mr. Moore has planned. Um, and, and by all means, if you <coughs> have any suggestions, would like to see something different, please communicate with him. You can, obviously, you can communicate with myself as well. Um, I'm, once this meeting's over, I'm out of it, so I'm just kind of here to help him navigate through uh, the addition, but obviously, you know, I'm a, I'm a team player and I'm here for the city, so if, you, if I deal, uh, talk with either one of you and have a suggestion, I'll also make sure to pass that on as well. I, I want to see this program be successful. I want to see Mr. Moore and his team be successful, and with their success comes our, our and the city's success. And I just want to state that um, me and Mr. Mora had some good conversations and uh, we we're looking at, you know, having either a bi-monthly meeting or a monthly meeting just to discuss, you know, what's been accomplished, you know, any ideas that you guys, um, you know, convey to me. I can also convey in those, in those types of meetings and things. I think it's going to be a great um, thing to going forward. And, you know, I look forward to working with them. Um, any further questions? Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Do you need a motion? Okay. Uh, we need a motion, yes. I'll make, make a motion to approve the funding for two additional clean city maintenance technicians, making the total staff count five. There's a motion. I'll second it. And a second? Any further discussion? All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Passes 5 0. Next on the agenda, Central CRA, a residential site improvement grant. If you want to discuss this briefly. And yeah. KK is coming up. I know that you all have had an opportunity to review this um, residential improvement grant. This is in the central CRA, and um, the property owner has submitted a grant application to us uh, for his, his mom's property over in um, the central CRA. The improvements they're looking to do is the replacement of an old fence with new decorative fencing. Um, to give you an idea. So the fencing would surround the, um, the structure or the house. They also plan to upgrade and improve the driveway. So there'll be some concrete work done um, for, you know, cracks and, and in addition, uh, I think they want to repair the apron as well. So I did attach the estimates for the work. The total estimate allowable costs are $5,982.63, and staff is recommending today an approval for 50-50 matching funds. 
of, two, of 2,991, 32. And if you have any questions, Mr. Wooten is here to okay. answer. Mr. Wooten, would you like to come up? Does anybody have any questions or you have anyone, anything right. you want to add? Uh, you know, uh, my mom, Deborah Wooten, is not here this morning. She uh, is taking care of my 92-year-old grandmother. Uh, but she sent me as a representative. We're a family, we don't really lean on our government, our local municipality too much because they're old school, they're conservative at heart, <laughs> but they might not vote that way. But they just uh, pile on together and raise the money on them their cell. They don't really like to deal with too much uh, of their government. But uh, but in this in this case, we you know she said, well, let's try it out. So just trying to update the area a little bit, a little bit, uh, update uh, uh, one of our houses over there a little bit uh, with the outside and the concrete that has sinked in. So uh, uh, we, we definitely, we care about our community. We want to use our local government, even though they're kind of old school, don't really know how to fill out applications and stuff, but uh, just, uh, like I said, just updating the area and trying to, Trying to make it a better place and look better, so okay. especially with fencing, a lot of well, security around there. There's a lot of things going on, so we definitely want to update. They did a great job on the, on the app. Yeah. Does anybody on the board have any questions for Mrs. Kaiser or Mr. Wooten? You said that your mom. This is your mom's home. Uh -huh. She's living there. No. This is your home, right? Uh -huh. Well, she she owns it, and we have family that come in and out there, so we are there. We're not pretty much going anywhere. <laughs> Anytime we can get rid of chain link, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, you are. <laughs> That's your campaign slogan, isn't it? I, I may need to be. <laughs> chain? Yes. Ms. Uh, Moore, anything? Well, I only maybe to Ms. Kaiser, um, there's nothing in the grant program that we would need to know that speaks to that this fencing is actually not visible from the roadway. It will be visible. Oh, it will be. It's decorative mm -hmm. vinyl fencing that will be visible. Oh, okay. From both roadways, actually. Okay, I was when I was looking at the um, the fence quote drawing, I was. That's why I printed this up. So yeah. Oh, okay. I thought it was for well, the so back. Gotcha. Oh, oh, I see. Mm -hmm. I was thinking it was the driveway. Was that little open triangle piece on the quote? Mm -hmm. And it was for the back. So. So that thank you for clarifying just for clarification that that line where the parcel line is is that where the fence is going to be it will be further in okay a, little, a, a bit closer to the house so yeah it's mm -hmm. just going to note that yeah like basically where that stop bar is on 11th avenue right. if it was there i think we ran into that issue one time on 14th and 13th uh west where it was sure. uh not offset enough and i hate to see there's a lot of pedestrian crashes in that way anyway mm -hmm. it's important to maintain that yeah mm -hmm. so okay all right uh, but any other questions all right chair will entertain a motion as recommended yeah. at the bottom chair yes ma'am move to approve residential improvement grant application for deborah martin wooten for a property located at 915 11th avenue east for an amount of two thousand nine hundred ninety one dollars and thirty two cents Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Passes 5 0. And I'll just you. one other note some more happy news and CRA dollars at work. Um, downtown, uh, the 1210 Fourth Avenue West building, the CRA board approved funding for new windows. So I have a before and I have an after. <laughs> Oh, very good. What a nice. diff. So, and the scaffolding is also coming down um, at the McCabe's building. So, once that's completely done, you're going to see a huge difference in the 10 windows that were replaced. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, next is the update on the Mini Rogers site with Mr. Peter Diadio and his attorney. 
good morning for the record, Kevin Reale, 4444 Street South in St. Petersburg. Um, I know that there was some communication yesterday. I don't know. Um, I actually haven't uh, met Mr. Monion yet, but um, I, I will soon and hopefully after this meeting. But um, because of the late communication, I'm not sure how much uh, made it to the CRA board. But I have three items to put into the record, and I have copies if uh, the board wants them passed around. One is just a short update that just sort of bullet points out, uh, has a bullet point list of <coughs> the recent uh, action for site development. Uh, one is a copy of the SIP uh, approval, and another is going back to February uh, for the uh, form-based code approval, which uh, Mr. Diadio did uh, confirm while the, the building size had to change slightly for the stormwater constraints that were dealt with over the last few months from when I was here last time um, is still uh, valid. So I'll, I'll hand those to the clerk, and if you want them passed out, I'm happy to hand them out. So just as a, as a general update, the, the, you know, you all will remember voting on further extension to try and get the SIP approved, which was approved this week. Uh, what ultimately ended up happening was the 20,000 square foot building had to be changed to about 17,000 square feet. There's some adjustment in parking with that. Stormwater is going to be vaulted and there's some pervious pavers. All of those things work together so that um, the stormwater can be properly uh, retained, detained, and then uh, leave the site. Uh, now what has to happen is it has to go to the Swift Mud to get approval, and that'll take some time. Um, but you know w we are on track now. Um, I wasn't involved from the beginning with the engineering. I'm not going to suggest that this is a some sort of uh, unheard of arduous process. Um, but let's just say that you know the permitting didn't go as expected, and that's why we're back and forth with asking for extensions and delays. But hopefully we are on track now. Um, one of the things that was discussed yesterday with staff that I would like to bring up and, and, and offer to the board is the, the lease itself gives the board the power to uh, approve plans, but more importantly, it gives the board the power to disapprove plans. And um, you know, there are, there are amendments that talked about the, the SIP, but all of the amendments, um, here, actually, I'll put this up on the screen. I'm sorry, do I? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll keep talking. Um, the, the amendments deal with a specific section of the lease, 6.3.1, uh, but it's actually section 6.4, <coughs> excuse me, and 6.4.1 that deal with uh, the ability for the, oh, let's see if I can do this. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <coughs> um, so the, the, the CRA, you all have the discretion to approve or disapprove plans. Um, and uh, the concern here is that the engineering was really difficult to sort out. And now we are um, going forward to, to SWIFTBUD, and that's a slow approval process. So we would ask for the, the board to acknowledge and, and approve, uh, or I shouldn't say approve, but necessarily accept the, the SIP approval that we received this week, uh, simply because it is um, uh, a design document and um, you know because of that we don't want something to come out you know three months from now where there's some sort of concern about the SIP um, and you know at that point we're already down the road with Swift Mud. Um, then ultimately after the Swift Mud permit um, there will be building plans and things like that and we can bring those before the board as well but those are of course are a little bit further down the line. Um, I there's a, a Technically, maybe the SWIFT mud permit's a design document. I'm not particularly sure the CRA is going to care about the SWIFT mud approval um, because it's not going to change anything on site. It's just going to accept the design as, as functional <coughs> for the swarm water. But of course, that could be included in there too. Um, so, so I do know that um, Mr. Munyan had, had talked to Mr. Diadio about um, you know not needing this vote, and and you know the language of the lease says may uh, uh, so, uh, sorry shall have the right to approve. So that's not a may. I'm sorry. Um, but if you continue on. Uh, it's hard to see. So if you start with 6.4.2, if a landlord disapproves documents, there's a whole procedure, and it continues on the next page. And 
and it just talks about a procedure for disapproval. We don't want to go into that three or you know some other number of months down from now, and, and I don't know that there's any concern with the design documents. So just given the the difficulty in getting the SIP approval, we're asking for the board's acknowledgement of that of that approval. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just to ask a question, mm -hmm. it says we reserve the right. If we don't vote, then what's the implications there? I'm correct. It's a discretionary provision. Um, I will say that I spoke with uh, Mr. Rudisil. Um, we knew that this request was coming um, late afternoon. And um, if the request is that they want to move under this 6.4 or 6.41, the proper procedure is for them to submit a um, request for such approval um, so that it can be placed on a future agenda. The board can review. Um, obviously, it's not appropriate to come to the meeting and, and, and make such a request because the board was not um, advised as, as such. So um, to answer your question a little bit more pointedly, I don't believe it's, um, it's not required. Um, they have their approval right here of their site plan from Public Works. Um, and as you've indicated, it's, it's discretionary. Um, obviously, if the board chooses not to um, disprove, then we'd have to look at the terms of the contract and um, at some point, if you might waive any rights to come back and have an issue with the SIP. Um, but I, at this point in time, I don't even know if you guys would have a reason to approve or disapprove at this point in time. I mean, you have something from Public Works approving it. I don't know why you would um, you need, I think you'd need to review and see if there's any reason why you would need to disapprove it. But that would need to be done um, at a noticed um, meeting. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mignon, do you have anything? So yes, uh, there was some conversation yesterday. Um, I had spoken to um, the attorneys, uh, Scott and Marissa yesterday in regards to what was coming up on the agenda. Um, the reason for Peter being on the, um, them being on the agenda was there may have been a point to where the SIP was not approved. Um, I had to get the agenda out, so they were put on that agenda just in case to see where we were going to be. Um, Monday, I believe the SIP was approved and they were already on the agenda. I had a conversation, like I said, with the attorney um, yesterday, Marissa and Mr. Rudisell, um, and let the, and they asked me um, what was the purpose of um, the Minnie Lee Rogers update. And I just informed them that I had put it on the agenda um, in, in the case that the SIP was not uh, obtained then it would be a possibility that it would need to be extended a few more days to be able to get that. So that's why it was on the agenda. Um, in our discussion, um, they asked me to uh, contact Peter Diadio, Mr. Diadio, and to add, you know let him know that it was not required for him to be here, and that um, you know because he got the SIP, SIP. And the date when the SIP was April 24th, I believe, and that um, he basically um, obtained what he needed to do versus, you know, what the uh, Third Amendment stated that he was supposed to um, get an SIP prior to April 28th. Um, he then let me know that he wanted to give the update and let me know that he wanted a motion uh, or a vote to acknowledge that that SIP had been, um, you know, that you guys acknowledged that the SIP was approved and that it was done prior to the, um, the date that it was needed to be done. Um, so then I, um, spoke with, uh, you know, I left a message for Ms. Powers um, regarding that. She left a message to me stating that if he does do that, um, that they would recommend um, that uh, a motion not be carried or voted on. And so, um, and to let uh, Mr. Diadio know that that would be the case if I was able to contact him. I was able to contact him, at, I, I believe it was like five o'clock last night. I let him know that they would recommend 
uh, what they would recommend, that the attorneys would recommend. He said that he wanted to come um, and, and ask for that acknowledgement in, at the meeting. So I said that's, you know, that's his, his prerogative to do that. And so that was our conversation uh, last night. Um, he did uh, then leave me a voicemail last night when I was not here, stating that um, they would look at the 6.4, uh, Article 6, and then, you know, 6.4 as what they would uh, uh, talk to you guys about. And then uh, this morning I received um, an email with the little agenda that he had uh, printed out. So that was um, that was our conversations, uh, my full conversations um, last night into this morning. Thank you. There was a discussion, Ms. Barbie, did you have anything? Uh, I think we need to listen to our attorney. Mm -hmm. Good advice always. Okay. Nothing. You're very succinct. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, <laughs> Mr. Chair. May I do you have a brief comment? Yes, sir. Uh, so, so the the lateness of the SIP approval and the, the inability for me to communicate with anyone prior to the meeting because of the lateness of the approval, I, I think that it gives the impression. And standing here, it feels like this is very contentious. I don't. I don't think we have a contentious problem here. Um, the notice issue was was not something we were considering, uh, given the the way the the, the, the lease is an active contract. But I can see that point. So I think that uh, the, the reality here is we've submitted the SIP into the record. I can sort of uh, you know understand or I guess what the board is going to do here today, which is uh, likely nothing. Um, but we will work with uh, with Mr. Munyan and, and try and put that on a future agenda and ask you all to to do that. We have the approved SIP in in the record. We got over that, that really difficult hurdle that we had to bring before you a number of times, and, and um, if that works for you all, we will, we will come back at a future meeting to ask for that sign-off. Okay, thank you. Any further comments? Any more? I, I, was, I was going to ask, I agree that we should listen to our attorney, but I was going to ask whether the, the defined term design documents includes the site improvement plan. It's actually broader than that. Um, the term includes, well, I can put it back up. So it's, uh, you, you see all of the terms there, um, any and all project improvements, which is uh, a defined term with the capital letters and then including, right, and it gives a, a non-exclusive list there. So. Um, you know, the concern is that it was very difficult to figure the drainage out, and we have another difficult step with Swift Mud, and we just, we just don't want to get down that path and, and find ourselves in a situation where, you know, the CRA looks later at the approval and says, oh, this wasn't what we expected. We, we want to look now, and if there's something that wasn't expected, which we don't think there is, we had to decrease the size of the building slightly, but there's still going to be room for, um, you know, a number of tenants in there, somewhere three to five on top of the, the main tenant. So, um, you know, we don't expect any issues. We just don't want to get caught down the road and have to have to start over. So that's more, more the concern. Uh, the, the term is broad, and so, uh, you, know, you know, I think that it, um, it fits in there, and that's not uncommon for, for codes in, in general. This is similar to what you would see in a land development code, which would say a, a design approval or a, or a um, uh, any type of um, development order or something to that effect is just a really broad term that pulls lots of different approvals within. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Um, okay. Unless, did I miss, have, have we been provided what was approved, the site plan approval? Have we seen it? Right was that? What we've, what we've been given what is the document. was not included in the Oh, we haven't. Act, okay. So, anyhow. So, I didn't miss something. So, to ask me to make a judgment on something I haven't even seen I can't and and it does bother me a little bit that I'm being told that our executive director asked us not to address it today and then it's still being pushed on us mm -hmm. in the future I just don't know that that's a great way to go just my opinion let's go to anything just I agree okay all right okay thank you thank you
you. Uh, next will be any other discussion or new business? Anybody with new business? Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. Uh, as chairman, do you have a timeline? Uh, we have, we've, we've appointed an interim, yes. but I also think that it's incumbent upon us to um, begin a search. Yes, um, city HR staff is coordinating that. Okay. Uh, and the recommendation from them is that it will, the position will remain open until filled uh, okay. for application submissions. Uh, can I just make one comment, yes, something ma'am. that I, I don't know if this is a policy or, but I, I feel that it, that it would be really important to have someone that lives here locally in that position. And I don't know if that needs to be put into the, the request, but I feel like that, that residency, at least in the county, should be a requirement. And it, and it may be that it has to say that it is preferred. That may be, yeah. you may have to put it that way. Um, I also see that we have one of our CRA officers in the back. And I was wondering if you'd come up and tell us a little bit about some of the things that you guys have been doing. Because I know I have been calling you a lot and you all have always been there. And I'd like you to at least toot your own horn a little bit. And I know I didn't, I didn't say I was going to ask you to come up forward, and I apologize for perhaps putting you on the spot. Good morning, Sergeant Darren Pilant, Brandon Police Department. Always enjoy a last second request. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> all, our, all our requests are last second requests, right? I mean, that's how it goes. Our officers are doing really good. Um, uh, they are obviously uh, working to resolve issues throughout the CRA. Um, I know that uh, just this last week, um, Officer Poulos met with uh, um, citizens within the, uh, the um, Village of the uh, Arts, sorry, a little unprepared here, but uh, Village of the Arts um, to deal with some issues with uh, uh, potential uh, drug sales and some other things like that and so he's connecting them to our narc unit and also um, Deanna uh, McNeil officer McNeil has uh, reached out to uh, residents on the the Riverwalk who are also experiencing some issues uh, especially down in the area that is considered the outdoor living room um, mm -hmm. over the weekend there was quite a few that uh, uh, decided to take up residency there and she dealt with it quickly but you know basically they're, they're reaching out to uh, businesses uh, it's in my hope that um, they create um, some networking among the businesses using either social media or some other form so they can create some type of business um, uh, watch programs within especially the the 14th Street CRA and the, the downtown CRA. There's fewer businesses, obviously, in the CCRA that, that, that they can connect with uh, and, and have that kind of community. But he's also, Officer Tells is doing that as well. Um, uh, I apologize. I, I was not prepared to come up and speak. But they, they, they're doing great jobs. And obviously, the vehicles are out there. They're, they're seeing them out there a lot. Um, um, is there any specific question? No, I, I just know that you and I have had numerous calls and conversations yeah. recently, and I, I wanted the board to hear how hard you all are working. I think they know that, but it always helps to, to reinforce that with us. So this group of CRA officers, I've, I've been here for years. I've worked with the previous ones and, and this one. I know they have all worked hard, but this group of CRA officers are very motivated. Uh, they're fairly new to the agency, at least two of them are, and they are very motivated to, to work hard. It's actually, I, I have to remind them that it's an ongoing issue that we're not going to resolve within a few weeks or months because they want to do it so quickly. I tell them it's, it's a marathon race rather it's than... It's not a sprint. Exactly. I don't want them to burn out because they're working so intently to try to resolve issues, but uh, there's a lot of good things coming. Um, well, we're working with homeless outreach uh, groups throughout the, the county as well to resolve some of the blight in that regard. 
Um, but uh, yeah, your officers are working extremely hard out there. They, they are very quick to, to uh, contact any citizens or businesses um, that contact them. They are continuing their community outreach through meetings and things like that. So um, we're seeing a lot of positive. Uh, mm -hmm. There's obviously uh, issues that, that, that have been revolving doors and we're working to resolve those as quickly as possible. But I think some of the issues are gonna be here with us for a while, um, but, but we'll, we'll continue to work at them, okay? I've heard from several of the businesses that contacted me and the residents that contacted me that I put your CRA officers in touch with the different. They are very happy. They feel that, that they have been heard. They feel that the officers care. And I just, I wanted to get that out there. And so I apologize for kind of springing it on you, but, um, the job. You're do, you're doing. I I think you all are doing a really good job, and I it's not easy. I've worked with different homeless agencies myself, mm -hmm. and there is a hardcore group of men and women that do not want to get off the street for whatever reason, whether it's a a, a mental illness that they self medicate with drugs and alcohol whether it's just an antisocial kind of thing. I mean, I've, I've dealt with it. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very hard. And I don't want your officers to get discouraged because people are seeing the good work that they do. And they are seeing that they care. Well, we absolutely work with, quite, like I said, multiple agencies to help those that do want the help. Mm -hmm. And we've seen a lot of people help through this program, whether it's relocation to resources, like family members that will take them in, or housing, uh, pushing them through the, the through turning points in other places to get them to the housing that they needed. So those that want help will receive help, that's for sure. And our officers are, are working again with even county homeless outreach managers and, and, and social workers to, to resolve those issues if they, if they will receive the help. And for the people that are complaining to me about the people standing on the, the side of the road holding, holding signs and panhandling, if you don't give them any money, they will move on. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's very similar to if you lock your doors in your communities, uh, your, 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 your car doors, people will stop coming in and trying to pull the doors and taking change out of your, your cars and whatever you leave in it. It's very similar to that. If you, if you stop you know, putting the money into their hands, they'll leave. But we are also, um, uh, Officer McNeil uh, enforces the ordinances that we have, um, writes the NTAs that she can when she sees the violations. Most of the violations have to occur in front of us. Um, and so it's sometimes difficult because we have marked units that we're <laughs> they're not hiding. So um, uh, when they do the, do vi the violations, I know she just uh, wrote uh, one just a couple of days ago. I was present for that. Uh, for one that was on 6th Avenue and 1st Street. So, um, as we can, we are enforcing the law, so. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. How many CRA officers do we have now? You have me as a sergeant, and then you have the three CRAs three. that are covered by one officer each. And there, when, when we get some new ones, can you bring them in and introduce? I'll be glad I to. Kinda I like believe, to know have you met all the CRA officers? I, I'm not sure I have all not. of us sure. have. Okay. They, they've changed okay. a bit. And I can bring them in um, uh, probably our next meeting. And Tell us who they are, please. Just uh, announce who they are. So Officer uh, Jordan Poulos, Officer Deanna McNeil. Uh, I apologize. Officer, officer Jordan uh, Poulos is the 14th Street CRA, mm -hmm. uh, or the officer for that uh, CRA. Uh, officer Deanna McNeil is the Bradenton CRA officer, and Officer Jeremy Tells is the C, uh, central CRA officer. What's that last name? Which one? Tells. Jeremy? Tells. Uh, Tells. -E or Tellis, it's depending on the pronunciation. Tell us, but it's pronounced yeah. Tells, much like mm -hmm. when okay. you're on the <laughs> <laughs> Kramer with a K and Kramer okay. with a C. Oh, they're both pronounced the same way. <laughs> <laughs> um, Believe me, I get the same thing with COVID. One thing I would say, uh, just because one of the things that comes up is that some of the CRAs feel like they don't get the same love. Um, obviously, you have officers in all three. Um, make sure that if they are doing the business watch, that if one is creating the plan, that they share that with the other two mm -hmm. and that those also get implemented. Yeah, um, absolutely. Because I know on 14th Street from years ago that when we did have a finally turn 14th Street a little bit better than it was before and is now, 
um, was when um, we had those businesses working together and sort of keeping an eye out because mm-hmm. some would be open regular nine to five, others were open later, and they all would keep out an eye out for their property. Absolutely. As we move forward on the Tamiami Trail area, Let's just make sure it's it's a challenge. Some some of the business owners want to be involved, and some don't, and and some want officers present more often than not. And so, well. We'll continue to reach out and they make They all our want them when they need them. I'm sorry, sir. They all want them when they need them. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. No. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other new business? Oh, can I bring up a couple of things? Of course. <laughs> uh, cup, uh, first off, I wanted to really give a shout out to Realize Brain, and I've been going to the concerts in the park, and they've been awesome. A lot of fun. A lot of people. A lot of people. It'll be nice when we can get back over on the other part. Even though I love the whole um, yep. amphitheater, and I'd really love that the boats are coming up, and I think we'll lose that when we move back over to the other, but there'll be a lot more room for other people. Uh, but um, it, it kind of makes me – have we had any communication whatsoever or explanation from Independent Jones about canceling? Because we – we added a lot of extra money to bump up our, and now I wish we'd have just given it to the concerts in the park to a bump up yeah. the, the quality of the music. Not that the, it's been great, it's awesome. But I actually met with um, Independent Jones yesterday to review the invoices or receipts from the March uh, event, and we talked at length about what a disappointment it was um, to have the event canceled and, you know, needless to say, no one really knew. So um, the circumstances surrounding it are kind of vague and fuzzy, um, but I think that all in all, there was a lack of communication or understanding um, when this agreement was entered into. I think if there had been further involvement on the part of the CRA to kind of stay on top of that and communicate, um, it, it may not have you know, worked out the way it did. But it's two sides of the coin. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just was very disappointed and um, she's very well aware of the disappointment on, on behalf of the board okay. and also the community and the yeah. taxpayers because those are the folks that are paying for these events. Yeah. So I made it very clear that, you know, from this point forward that it has to be done more thoroughly. It has to be transparent. We have to know this information up front, not at the eleventh hour, and mm-hmm. to be it, so that we can help them be successful. Okay. So, do you want? Does anybody else have something? Or can I have a couple more things? Okay, yeah. um, we have talked for a long time about visioning. You know, I love. I, I was part of that process, and it was a great process downtown by design. Of course, it's time to update and do some planning and visioning. And I, the, what I liked about what we did is it was very community driven. I mean, there were over 200 people involved in the process. And so it really was, the plan had a lot of community input. I it, And let me just say, it's also a great thing to do. If your children are not following their rules, you make them come down and participate. Because as we know, the children are the future. <laughs> But um, in talking with Realized Bradenton, I understand that they're starting a process, and they've, they, are, they have hired a consultant that's well-respected. I'd like to see us maybe look at who they're using, maybe piggyback or work with them, because I know we're in a, in a big transition here with hiring a new person, but I, I feel like it just keeps getting kind of kicked down the road, and maybe if we can work with them, and I know we've budgeted money for it, so. I would just like us to at least consider, you know, working with them on that visioning process to get, to help us get. So I just want to throw that out there. Maybe it could be workshopped or something. 
And then I also would like the, the I'm not sure who's responsible for the flags, the banners. Um, I know they were originally purchased by the public art committee. Yes, I was on the committee and the public art money was used to buy the hardware. And it was, there was children's art that was done on the banners. Now, I actually like that we're doing some of the, the banners that are, you know, I like promoting the Pirates, they're a great partner. But spring training's over, and so I, I don't know, are we gonna, I don't wanna see those Pirates flags stay through the whole year again. Well, And so I don't know who's responsible for it, it maybe council, I know the mayor did the, um, has done some stuff, but I just wanted to throw it out there. As far as the Pirates go, I mean, you also have the Marauders in town all summer. And oh, yeah. It is Some a, of the flags are, and, are specific to spring this, training, though. 100 years of Bradenton baseball, those, I mean, I would certainly say those would remain. Yeah. But, yeah, I think seasonally we should. I, I would like to see them seasonally changed, yeah. yeah. I understand that. So. Okay. Um, if, if I could just interject as far as the banners for baseball and whatnot, that, that is not a CRA. We're not involved in that, um, nor is public art. So I'm not sure who at the city level, um, or even it could be the Pirates, I, I'm not sure, um, working with the city to get those, to, to have those hardware, changed out. The hardware on those poles was purchased with public art funds. Mrs. Farmer, back if you want day. to come up. Well, and maybe, <laughs> Way back in the maybe day, our yes. city clerk knows a little bit about this, too. So. Well, so I think Mrs. Farmer's oh. going to come up, and then we'll have Mrs. I Melvin. didn't mean to put anybody on the hot seat. I'm mm. just throwing this out for discussion. Well, it's, a friendly, <laughs> it's a friendly audience now, so please come forward. <laughs> I just want to tell you that when we were talking about, because we do have that um, group from the school district coming up, so we talked with the mayor, and the mayor told us that that is an administrative thing through the mayor's office now. Okay. That's what I was told. Okay. Okay. Oops. And Mrs. I have the thumbs up from Mrs. Melton in the back. No further need for her comments. Uh, okay. <laughs> Keep going. You're doing swell. Yeah, no, I'm done. <laughs> That's it? I'm done. I really am done. Oh. It's like you switched chairs. Me too. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just take two seconds to say a resounding yes to the visioning. Um, and, and Mr. Munyan and I have talked about priorities as the team gets their bearings and and gets their uh, you know process in place so i agree with you and and maybe there's some cost benefit to somehow teaming up i'll just throw that out there if there's some kind of you know economic benefit to doing it at the same time or using a similar consultant um, but i just want to say yes i i agree that visioning is a priority and can't wait to dive right into it. Okay. Anything further? I just to comment on that, you know, I'll get, get I have to get my bearings, see where we were in the process. I know that's been discussed about teaming up. Um, you know, planning is has talked to us too in regards to, you know, kind of putting it on a you know, complementary track um, to get that done. So just little patience as I kind of go through that and see where we were on that process. Because I know some of it was supposed to be started, but I need to just find out where, it, where we're at. But I would say probably also the CRA board may have to pause just a few <laughs> months until the city council makes some mm -hmm. decisions on downtown as well before we dive into a downtown, a new downtown by design because it might be designed differently. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Good point. Might, might, yeah. big might. <laughs> okay, any other questions, comments? Anything for the good of the order? I'd like to thank Ms. Powers for joining us today. Thank yes, you. Thank you, that and for your expert nice. commentary. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, we are adjourned.